welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. I have come upon a couple of different channelings from Quo that are dedicated to the issue of cancer and death. And I know that sounds dark and depressing, but there's a lot of amazing metaphysical insight that I found with this discussion. From a lot of metaphysical material, we understand that cancer is a metaphysical disease. It is anger that's not released within the body and a variety of other things. So I wanted to get a little better idea of what Quo had to say. In particular, they also discuss how we talk with somebody that has cancer and is facing death as ourselves and with others. I don't know if you've ever confronted this, but it is obviously a huge catalyst and very important to understand this higher perspective. Quo is a group or principle of higher density beings channeled through LL Research. LL Research also originally channeled the raw material known as the Law of One. Many of these channelings are wonderful. They only basically answer questions and they are always resonating with me and I find them incredibly powerful as do many others who have reached out to me. We begin with a channeling delivered on February 8th, 1987. What do you say to people who have cancer and are facing the possibility of death? Carla Channeling. I am Quo and I greet you in the love and the light of the one infinite creator. It is a great privilege to be with you and to be called to offer our humble service during your meditation. We are honored that you choose to ask us questions which those who seek to know the truth would surely ask. It is good to share the vibratory energies of those who seek as we do, the one creator in each aspect, for we as you have no greeting but love and light, for there is no impulse but thought and no manifestation but light. Yet few are those who may greet each other in the comradeship of shared seeking and under the banner of the one infinite creator. And may we say to you that it is our opinion that it is the experience of dwelling in trust with those who are from elsewhere who yet share the same creator. They are the true center and have the true value that we have to offer as we answer your questions and that you have to offer as you ask them of us. For the trust we place in each other is a symbol of our attempt to grasp our unity, one with another, and our common identification as the Creator. The sharing of beingness and consciousness is indeed a powerful thing, and we take this opportunity to thank you. Nor should you fear if your numbers are small and your meditation circle is not vast, or even if you sit alone. Yet still, if you know and claim the witness of unseen friends, the light that you may raise in meditation is enormously powerful. We hope this has set up that which we wish to say about advice to those who must speak to cancer victims. My children, it is difficult to penetrate the illusion of life or death while living in such an artificially delicate and cumbersome mechanism as the physical vehicles which you enjoy during your earthly experience. The nature of experience is interestingly mazed. Seemingly positive and happy experiences are oftentimes of little depth. Times when thought processes are slowed and intellectual, spiritual and physical senses dulled, whereas difficult times and crises seemingly so appalling as experiences often produce excitement revivication of heart and mind and soul, rededication and renewal of stewardship and service commitments. When you receive the news of a known killer, which has been found within your physical body, you are naturally going to spend an ocean of tears, wept or unwept, a ton of words said and unsaid, railing against and being angry about the cessation of life. Yet in the crisis of possible death lies a tremendous opportunity for the rededication of the life. For news of a possible death is a creative disturbance, a freeing mechanism which allows the one experiencing it to consider a wider variety of options with more seriousness than when the entity thought he was perfectly healthy. There's an opportunity not to be afraid. There's the opportunity to turn into one who celebrates the life lived in the present moment. 
such an entity having found a center of joy and peace in the appreciation of many blessings notes with keen accuracy the difficulties of the present moment without becoming discouraged because of the debit side of the balance sheet thus refraining from dwelling upon possible futures yet inspired by the possible future of depth to the amendment of the attitude at the present moment the seeker who wishes to transform the experience of cancer may begin by affirming and celebrating each day as it awakens this is not an exercise to use merely during periods of potential death it is an exercise for life not for death for each day may be lived far more fully and with far more enjoyment and freedom spontaneity and humor than most among your peoples are able to manifest for the negative emotions and blockages color and bias the experience in negative ways any entity may choose to begin to shape the life experience for the self and by so choosing may become a more and more polarized entity we turn to look at some practical matters we realize that as we scan this instrument we look at two providers whose families are dependent upon money earned by one potentially not able to provide we would speak to those who fear that there is not a plenteousness of all things the remembrance of friends strangers who smile individuals who unpredictably but generously may aid an unknown person it is well to put one's thoughts not on the lacks of one incarnation especially when these lacks are beyond one's control but to focus one's interest and energy upon the assets of the same situation if one needs not worry about money beyond a certain point in other words if one values one's life and feels that the environment of the livelihood has contributed to the illness then it is time to use the creative energy of difficult situations to view the needs the true needs of the social unit of which the entity is a part it is well to meditate and find out for the self whether the lesson is to stay and learn to love or to move towards a greater love and faith but with small practical and earthly expectations we are not those who advise reckless moves for the sake of testing the faith yet deep within each entity there lies a sure knowledge of the rightness of each step of the life plan within each at this moment lies a knowledge that the entity is on the path which has been set or not to arrive at contact with that level of self-awareness is a blessing and it's usually earned you must seek to know yourself as if you truly and honestly like and respect yourself you cannot plunder the self any more than you would insult a high priestess in each other area of practical earthly endeavor think meditate and discuss with the family unit which you have made those things which are for and not for you and then when the thinking has been done the centering and the clearing and the grasping of the feelings of the self have been accomplished put aside the consciousness of the dying and realize that that which is in a disease such as cancer is allowed because your emotional and mental complex were not able to love and instead blocked love in some situation this is a mechanical rather than a judgmental description and refers to the fact that illness in general results when the body reacts to a loss of electrical and chemical imbalance within the body complex the body then as manifesting illness is attempting to heal itself and so-called illness is indeed a process of health by positive and affirmative attention to the present moment the many blessings which are experienced in that moment and both the wonder and the terrible mystery of life and death one may transform the experience of serious illness into the beginning of a new consciousness one which is closer to that which may be held within the illusion you now enjoy and after you leave the same illusion would you wish to change personalities because you change bodies or would you prefer to be more and more truly yourself more and more fully a manifestation of the truth about yourself more and more an opening through which the love and the light of the infinite creator shine forth not to impress but to make joyful perhaps we have rambled a bit this evening my children at times it was necessary that we say a few things quickly through this instrument that we might keep her at an appropriate level we thank you for your patience and it is our hope that each may see the centrality of affirming and celebrating the creator in the self and the self in the creator 
who each of us is hid complete in who the Creator is and the truth of us is the truth of the Creator. Let us all turn then to that great light that shines in the darkness of ignorance and chaos which is much of the illusion about you and seize hold of the central search. Life and death mean very little compared to the song of the present. For to breathe is to sing. Each soft rustle of inhalation and exhalation makes a melody in the ether of creation and sends motes of light in millions of directions with each breath, moving and moving the particles of light. Each intentional prayer is a lovely song and each silence a poem. Who you are is not how you feel. What the condition of your body is, what your bank account is or where you live, more deep ties are those of family, friend, and companion. Yet in the end, the seeker stands alone with the truth and each seeker is an infinitely great and potentially infinitely impeccable great warrior, the creation itself. We are those of Quo, and we humbly thank you for having asked us to be with you this evening. We leave our blessing and love with each, and with each about whom questions we're asking as always, that it be understood that we are not infallible. We would attempt to open the group to questions, and shall transfer to the one known as Jim. We leave this instrument with thanks, and in love and light. I am Quo. Jim Channeling, I am Quo, and greet each again in love and light through this instrument. We would at this time be honored to respond to those queries which those present may have for us. May we begin with a query. Question, is it not true that before our incarnation into this life that we choose our own death and it could be the case that we would use cancer or some other illness as the means of our death? I am Quo, and we might suggest, my brother, that there are correctnesses and incorrectnesses in the assumptions which you have made. We shall attempt to speak to this topic. It is true that those who are aware of the process of incarnation and its purpose due to a conscious discovery of this incarnative process during an incarnation take a more complete role in the planning of the incarnation which is to come before the incarnation. The framework for attempting certain lessons that will enrich an entity as a whole is determined as are those services which might be shared as fruit of the effort of learning with others. There are many possibilities for each incarnation in these two general realms of endeavor, that of learning and that of serving. Because free will is paramount within the incarnation, and indeed before the planning must take a general form with many potential specific aspects be they events or entities, programmed, shall we say, as possibilities and perhaps even probabilities. Many are dependent upon other choices and agreements made between entities for various times and purposes. Thus there is much that is fluid and flexible, shall we say, within any incarnation that will allow for the learning of the lessons and the offering of the services. That graduation, shall we say, from the incarnation that is called the death, in many instances, is the subject of such planning, which is to say, there's a variety of possibilities for each entity that may occur according to the completing of the overall plan for the incarnation in a more or less successful fashion. It may be said that the lessons shall continue for any entity within an incarnation until their weight grows too heavy at which time the entity shall have planned for one means of bringing the incarnation to its culmination. This general means of ending the incarnation may be seen as a continuing effort to gain in the polarization in consciousness which has been chosen. Thus, when an entity is more successful, shall we say, in the overall plan, and has achieved much of that which was laid out before the incarnation, it may be that one or more potential death, as you call them, experiences are presented to the entity who by its efficiency in continuing to utilize the catalyst 
may yet continue within the incarnation by successfully utilizing the catalyst which could have brought about that termination of the incarnation called death. However, it may be that an entity finds some difficulty within some portion of the incarnation, perhaps through attempting to learn too rapidly certain lessons, and may take advantage of an earlier potential terminating of the incarnating through specifically planned catalyst, which when unsuccessfully processed may result in what you call a disease and which then might end the incarnation. Each disease, as you call them, is a symbolic representation for a certain entity or perhaps a grouping of entities of a certain kind of lesson. Thus the ending of the incarnation shall come for each within your third density illusion, yet the ending is not necessarily that which has been chosen to unfold in one fashion only and one time only and by one means only, yet may be that which is possible after a certain point and may be possible in a continuing fashion according to the entity's ability to continue to process the catalyst which it has provided for itself within the incarnation. Thank you for the answer. Why is it that some cultures on this planet are virtually free of the disease known as cancer? I am quote, and we find that this disease is one which is late to join the experience of your peoples upon this planetary sphere, and being of recent influence has found its roots within those cultures which are of a more individualized nature, shall we say. By this we mean that those entities which comprise the cultures which are most susceptible to utilizing this disease are those cultures in which the identity of the individual is more firmly fixed and exercised, so that the relationship which develop from such strongly characterized traits that form the personal identity are those relationships which partake less fully of cultural or tribal or primitive traditions and more fully of those situations in which emotional exercise, shall we say, is determined and amplified by individual choice. Thus, the difficulties, as you call them, which bring about the heated feelings of anger and the venting of that emotion in an uncontrolled fashion and the failure to heal those wounds which it brings about are those conditions which are most salubrious for the fostering of the condition which you call cancer. We then move to a channeling delivered on December 22nd, 2002. The question, can the source of anger seeming this is the source of cancer be inherited? Can it be from past life programming or could it be deliberately implanted or consciously created to create a learning opportunity during the incarnation? Carla Channeling, we are those known to you as the principle of quo and we greet you with great joy in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator in whose service we are. It is a great blessing and privilege to be called to your group this day to join in your meditation and offer our humble opinion on the subject of the causes or the providence of cancer. We are glad to share our opinions with you with the request as always that each discriminate carefully as each listens or reads so that no idea is allowed to take lodging within your value system that is not resonant to you personally. With this in place, we feel much freer to offer our opinion without being concerned that we might infringe on your free will. The circle of seeking this day queries concerning cancer, and certainly we may speak concerning this particular distortion or disease. However, our remarks may in general be relevant to other conditions and estates of humankind's physical vehicle. We would begin by acknowledging some of the basic structure from which we speak concerning that which is conceived of among your peoples as disease. Since all that has formed is a distortion of the one original thought, to say that disease is a distortion is not to insult the bread, for indeed that which is known among your peoples as disease has its own beauty and function within the system of dynamics of third density. It is a highly convenient and somewhat sensitive means of ending a lifespan at the just and appropriate time for that entity and indeed in many cases the so-called disease comes into play as a result of the filling up of the capacity of the entity's learning system from the wear and tear of the daily incarnational experience once the vital energies of the entity have 
expended that amount which they have to offer to the challenges and pleasures of having breath and life within third density, which may have ended sooner than was intended before incarnation. This is impossible to predict before incarnation. Either how Catalyst will strike this entity within incarnation, or to what depth the increased load of unprocessed experience may go. When such bank accounts of undigested experience result within an entity, so that the amount of unprocessed catalyst is over the full line of an entity in terms of incarnational energy, then it is that the physical vehicle may gladly accept the disease in order to plead a sensible and timely period upon an incarnational pattern. This is most helpful for the entity so that healing may occur as would be needed to create an atmosphere within which the entity somewhat healed from its travels in its personality shell through the incarnation may recover itself, take thought after its healing, and consult with its higher self and all guides in the construction of a new incarnation which would address those unresolved catalysts. It is for this reason that many entities who find themselves dealing with physical difficulties of one kind or another would then end life experience at a younger age than would be, shall we say, the cultural norm among your peoples. Consequently, whatever the condition or disease that is perceived by those who offer tests with the various measuring devices of your peoples, they have only the outer hints and clues as to the true cause of the condition. The shape of unprocessed emotion with the incarnational energy vehicle most closely associated with the physical vehicle has a much more accurate and clear concept of where the opportunity of an ending to the incarnation is coming from in terms of cause. Only the entity, and perhaps sometimes not even that entity, is fully aware of what sorrows upon the heart, what unbalanced emotion upon the emotional body have created a situation of imbalance, which has reached the point where the mind complex of an entity cannot balance it. When this occurs, the natural evolution of the distortion known as disease is to move from those difficulties within the mind to the more obvious hints and clues offered by the analogous condition which has been given to the body. For it too, shall we say, act out its distress, sorrow, anger, grief, or whatever, the imbalanced emotion or unrefined emotion that has been causing the distortion to be chronic within the energy body of the individual. The query specifically moves to question the three possible causes of the arising of cancer from anger. That is the predisposition of the genetic makeup of the vehicle, the carryover from past life distortions, and the placing of the illness or condition within the life experience as a response to those things which occur within incarnation. And we would take these on one at a time after simply saying that we would agree with the one known as J1, that relating the emotions of unrefined anger to the condition cancer is quite often correct as a solution to linkage between mind and body in the arising of that particular disease. Firstly, there is the possibility of genetic predisposition, and while we completely agree that this predisposition is a portion of many entities within your density who do experience the arising of this disease, it is entirely possible for two entities with the same genetic makeup to respond quite differently to stress when it takes the form of the hot and fiery distortions of anger. One entity may be able to allow the refining of that anger by not resisting it or holding on to it, but simply sitting with that anger in utter compassion for the reasons for that anger, the hurt and pain and sorrow behind that anger, the entity feeling threatened, fearful, abandoned or unworthy and thus creating the experience of a confused anger that can be placed in the tempering fire of patience and waiting so that anger is given time to be refined by the enduring fire of experience. When that which is creating distortion is allowed to express itself completely in the inner energetic system of the vehicle, then it is that the physical distortions that might arise, the cause of genetic predisposition, will not arise since there is not 
an imbalance penetrating or chronic enough to trigger the stimulus to which cancer is a response. Consequently, the thinking system and the perception system of each entity has the responsibility for determining what is the truth of any particular occurrence and when an entity's information system is able to deliver, shall we say, a less distorted truth concerning the evolution of the emotion of anger, the skill of this draws the sting out of the otherwise triggering perception that the entity is no longer safe and must become one who is on guard and protecting oneself. This contracting or defending choice when faced with one's own anger defines the perception that the cells of the body will receive. If anger is perceived and yet it is perceived from a viewpoint of safety, compassion and nurturing it will not constitute a trigger for a physical vehicle to produce that which is cancer. Thus, it is exquisitely central for entities to be alert to the actual nature of their allowed perceptions for what is perceived is what the physical vehicle reacts to. Each has seen the demonstration of hypnotism, where an entity is informed that being stuck with a pin will not hurt, and sure enough, the hypnotist is able to demonstrate the changed perception of the client which has been hypnotized. This is precisely the nature of perception, and we encourage each always to gaze with a clear eye and an unbiased point of view at the nature of one's thoughts. For each thought that is processed by the intelligence has its nature, its strength, and its vector in terms of polarity and purity. The second suggestion as to causes of the cancer, that is, the cause of how the anger expresses itself in cancer, is that which is carried over into a present incarnation from a past incarnation. Often there is, in the experience of older souls upon your planet, that is, those who have been through multiple lifetimes upon your planetary sphere, that there is a carryover, especially of those experiences that have been involved in a previous death, the place of a fatal blow, the chakra involved in a mortal emotional dysfunction, even the primary and secondary energy centers associated with certain relationships, distortions, and imbalances. When such a relationship is central to the incarnation pattern, it may well constitute an imbalance that expresses even through an entirely new body and energy system the cause of the strength of the previous distortion. Often in the case of wanderers, this does not apply because such entities have balanced karma, moving into the earth plane, and therefore have only the energies of the present incarnation to balance. When such a lack and imbalance does persist from one incarnation to another, we would say that it most generally does not take a certain form in terms of disease, but rather constitutes an area of weakness that may be a target of opportunity for those illnesses that are offered to one that is as toxic state of imbalance. These would then have to do more with the energy center affected by the imbalance than they would have to do with the particular disease. That is where the imbalance was seen to be a yellow ray imbalance. Shall we say the disease might be the organs? It might be cancerous. It might be a nervous disease. It might have various descriptions depending upon the target of opportunity, its timing, and those illnesses available in the surroundings of the reality. However, such an illness would involve the same basic area of the physical vehicle. This then would not be so much an emotionally caused disease, but rather it would be that almost mechanical outworking of previous patterns with the insulating numbness of forgetfulness to ease the outworking of a complex pattern of imbalance from a previous incarnation. The usual expressions of such carryover illness are those expressions such as the colds, the flu, the problems with weight, the problems with the appearance of the skin, those things which are more generalized or simply visit for a time at a time when an entity does present a target of opportunity. The third suggestion of the one known as J1 was that such anger may create opportunities for such a disease as cancer from inside the incarnation or from just prior to incarnation during the planning stages. And we would say that often this is the cause which is the, shall we say, the efficient cause of cancer among your peoples 
for many are the people who are very eager to cleanse and purify their energy body of all imbalance and the guidance before incarnation encourages the self to put in place a possibility of illness in order that should the incarnation not be going as planned there may be set in place the predetermined tendency to form illnesses which create the opportunity for inner work a good example from channeling which we find within this instrument's awareness is that of the one known as franklin who programmed into its incarnation the possibility of crippling polio this did not occur in childhood as that particular disease normally does but rather it was set in place as a fallback strategy in case the one known as franklin became led astray from its desires prior to incarnation to become more positive more open-hearted and more service-oriented the practice of politics is shall we say not designed to create such opportunities for positive polarity but rather such practice as those of a politician may well lead to service to self energies being fairly freely encouraged under the guise of helping groups of people for their own good when this particular imbalance became marked enough within this entity's incarnation it then chose subconsciously to create for itself a situation within which it would be more able to do inner work and less able to have a breath and a fast pace of social activity this did indeed in this particular entity's case work well and created the possibility of much good work and balancing the distortions have to do with the right use of power when a severe illness comes to one unexpectedly it certainly is appropriate to question carefully all three of these possibilities and many others not yet thought of it is well to gaze deeply into the self to see as clearly as possible the distortions and glamours and exaggerations and cruel lacks of self-encouragement and self-validation that may have created such an imbalance that the energies of disease were needed it is well always to see disease not as an enemy but as that friend which has perhaps come too soon and needs to be asked to move out of the stage of life and back into the wings so that more of this incarnation may be enjoyed the solution which the one known as j1 seeks to the riddle of disease and illness is that which we commend for truly all is love and as each becomes able to see the self with love and all things outside the self with love one is able to create the atmosphere in which healing occurs it is like giving oxygen to the one who's having trouble breathing to give love to the inner self it may seem that others should love one and one should love others and that self-love is selfish but there is a level at which it is not only unselfish but necessary for health to come into a sense of peace within the self that is beyond explanation that is the result of feeling unthreatened safe and nurtured and there is no one but the self that is able to give that resource to the self on a stable everyday basis certainly an entity may feel safer with a certain companion or with a certain group however in terms of the innermost workings of an energy system within the human third density being the setting of the stage for a balanced and even functioning experience of living is what this instrument calls falling in love with the self the energy of compassion is easy to feel for others it is easy to open one's heart when one sees another's suffering it is much more difficult to see the beauty of one's own suffering and to see the heroism of one's own endurance and determination to survive it's very easy for an entity to be blind to his own beauty more than that it is very easy for entities especially within your culture to fear and shun the shadow self thus alienating that dark side of self in which lies so much strength and health with appropriately acknowledged loved and disciplined the one known as john wrote love is all there is others have written similar sentiments such as love is the answer and these simple phrases hold a powerful and unified truth we would ask each at this moment to rest and to invite the self to move beneath the breathing the heartbeat and to the essence of self beyond form beyond function beyond explanation can you feel the jewel like crystal of you vibrating radiating and being experience that beautiful energy that is yours alone feel it flowing from the root chakra upwards and out the top of the head 
sense into the entity upon your left. Now turn your attention to the entity upon your right. Feel the energy fields mingle and cuddle together and feel the energy of the group entwining itself from the energies that have flowed out of the heads of each so that they begin to spin and form a spiral upward spiraling, moving on into the eternal realms from each pilgrim heart. This is your beauty and this is the beauty of the group. We would at this time transfer this contact to the one known as Jim, that we may answer any shorter queries that this group may have at this time. We thank you, Carla, and leave this instrument in love and light. We are those of Quo. Question? I have a question from T. She says, I'm interested in the energy exchanges between individuals. I understand the law of squares and was wondering if the benefit is the same. I am Quo, and we are again with this instrument, and we appreciate the patience of each present and to continue. When in the meditative state, then it is well to focus the attention upon some quality that belongs to the entity with whom you wish to link your energies. Perhaps this quality might be the open-hearted sharing of energies that is available through this person. Perhaps it is the kind of question which this entity seeks with you to solve the riddle too. Perhaps it is a desire to share a certain kind of future experience. The sending of love and light to various places upon your planetary surface, for example. Whatever the focus mechanism, it is well to utilize this quality, desire, or goal in order to blend the energies with the other self within the meditative state. It is well to decide beforehand the appropriate time for such an experiment, and it is well to retire to that place that is yours for the seeking within the meditative state, that place which you have made holy by your previous intentions. When these simple prerequisites are accomplished, then one may enter into the meditative state with a certain degree of confidence that what you are attempting to do is indeed possible and shall bed the result of your efforts. Is there a further query, my sister? Carla, I was wondering if you could comment on whether it is equal to have a focus group in a physical location then have others from remote areas focusing on the focus group or is it equally efficient to have no focus group but simply everyone at a remote location connecting to the place itself at a certain time i am quo and i'm aware of your query my sister in the attempt to provide increased energy resources to various portions of your planetary surface we find that it is well to focus upon these places as precisely as one can within the meditative state for this is a metaphysical working that is being attempted and is not one in which the physical precision is required, for it would be nearly impossible to find the precise location of any point upon your planetary surface that was described by latitudinal and longitudinal lines. Thus one must rely upon the intention of the group of meditators that sends its energy offering with the precision that is allowed in the metaphysical realms. Thus it is well to have an entity or a group which organizes such an effort, yet all who partake may do so from their own personal locations. Is there a further query, my sister? Question. So just to let me clarify, so when somebody like James Twyman goes to whatever place he has gone to most lately and then has everybody pray for peace at that place, I think most recently it went to Iraq. The advantage is psychological within this illusion rather than metaphysical, is that correct? I am Quo and are aware of your query, my sister, and in general this is correct, though we are aware that the entity of whom you speak is one who also performs his own kind of music and magic within the location that is in need of the energy of healing. This is a somewhat different kind of working, for this entity also operates within the social and to a lesser degree the political realm of the area in which he is involved this adding different levels of energy to the mix, shall we say. Is there another query? If you don't mind me being persistent, would it be easier for people to focus and become linked concerning a place if there was a small focus group somewhere in the surrounding area at a specific time, or does that make no difference in terms of the law of squares, in terms of the actual faith of entities who are able to join with each other metaphysically? My basic question is, does it actually help people with the process of linking up to have somebody to focus on, or is it just as easy to focus on the place as to focus on the person? I am Quo, and I'm aware of your query, my sister. We appreciate your persistence. 
The query is best answered, we feel, by suggesting that it does not make a difference to those who are from a distance sending their energy resources to have other entities within the area receiving the energy that will focus it. This is an activity which all may accomplish from a distance, shall we say, for it is a metaphysical working that is attempted. Is there any further query, my sister? So the only advantage that a focus group would have would be if they produced their own gift to the place, and that would be another kind of energy rather than purely metaphysical. Is that correct? I am quote. This is correct, my sister. Is there another query? No, I am done. Thanks. I am quote. We thank you once again, my sister. Is there another query at this time? My question is that I'm really interested in learning how to start to remote view. I realize that it takes a lot of energy. Do you have any suggestions that you could give one on how I could create more energy to learn how to remote view? I am a quo and I'm aware of your query, my sister. Again, as in all metaphysical undertaking, it is well that one cultivate the desire to do that which you describe and to set aside a certain amount of your time upon a daily basis in order to practice that which you wish to accomplish. It might also be helpful if you enlisted the aid of a friend or two and informed this friend that a certain time you would attempt to visualize this friend within whatever surroundings this friend may be currently placed. Then at a later time to check your experience with that of your friend. This done upon a daily basis or some portion of your time might develop the ability to see with the far seeing inner eye that which is usually missed. Is there a further query, my sister? No quote. Thank you so much for being with us today. I'm Quo, and we thank you, my sister, as well. Is there another query at this time? I have a question. I was reading raw in connection to how they came at this time to help correct distortions that they felt occurred from a long time ago. I was wondering if there is any assistance we can provide in helping raw correct any distortions that they feel occurred. I am Quo, and I'm aware of your query, my brother. The attempt to alleviate those powers which were given to the law of one by the experience of those of law with those of the Egyptian culture many thousands of your years ago is an experience that is profound enough in its fundamental nature, its ability to influence many of the population of your planet is also that which is difficult to achieve in any physical sense. For there has been the, shall we say, construction of a certain artifice of an intellectual or mental nature that is the result of the reserving of information meant for all by a few. That this pattern has been reproduced in an extensive sense in the years that follow this experience, that perhaps the most help that can be offered by individuals at this time is to seek to remove these distortions from one's own pattern of experience and personality structure, thus the healing of the self as is the first attempt and work of any who would heal others is that which is most helpful to the entire planetary population and not just to those of the social memory complex known as Ra. This experience of attempting to balance the internal distortion is that which uses the information concerning the law of one in its most significant sense. For as one is able to find a balance within the self, then one radiates this attitude of unity in a way which is much like the broadcast signal from one of your radio or television stations. Thus the principle might be stated that one teaches many for the beacon that shines from the consciousness that has been cleared its own system of energy is radiant, is all-pervasive, and is that which enlightens the darkness. May we ask if there is a final query at this time? Not for me, thanks. I am Quo. We find that we have apparently exhausted the queries for this session of seeking. We would again take this opportunity to share our gratitude with those present for inviting our presence in your circle of seeking this day. We are most filled with joy at each invitation for to share your experiences for but these brief moments is most enheartening and enlightening to us as well. For we see that with which you struggle in your daily round of activities as you move through this grand illusion, attempting whenever possible to pierce the veil of forgetting and remember just one small bit more of information and inspiration with which you have propelled yourself into this dimension and these incarnations with the desire to serve and to seek the one creator. We are known to you as those of Quo. We would take our leave of this instrument and this group at this time. We leave each in the love and in the ineffable light of the one infinite creator, Adonai. 
Arunai. It has been a sheer joy to read these two channelings from two very different times in the history of LL research, yet they sound so, so similar. Quo was talking in 1987 as well as 2002. And even though if you looked at the thumbnail for this episode, you didn't want to hear about cancer or anything like that, within the realm of cancer is deep metaphysical and spiritual issues. We see an expression of the mind to body, most purely in the disease of cancer, in the places that it occurs in the body. Your emotions are the greatest poison in the world, and one of the greatest epidemics that has ever been on this planet is the epidemic of emotions that are stuck in people's body that they don't release. Every emotion I always just at least at a minimum will tell you to release any emotions that are remaining in your body. You can do it consciously. You can do this. Some people struggle to eliminate emotions, but there are ways that you can program and communicate with your body through leaning techniques or the pendulum where you can communicate with the body and ask it if it's been removed. Sometimes that helps for people. But what we get here is a real understanding of the death process in cancer. For some, dying of cancer may be more beneficial than dying in a car accident. As in my mother's case, it gave her time to find forgiveness, to find peace, to find resolution with things in her life. She undertook her cancer for three or four years. It felt like every single day in that time that my mom was dying. So that was a long time for her to deal with catalysts that would come up in an expedited manner. What I noticed was that she started to deal with things in her past and other things much faster and more clear, clear sighted. And it gave her an opportunity to resolve that catalyst. So sometimes in some particular incarnations, cancer is very helpful for people that are ignoring their problems. They've kind of let the problems build up in their bodies. And suddenly this thing happens and we know that time is running out. And in that interim, there could be healing. You can find healing enough to eliminate the cancer as we understand that the angers and emotions that we're dealing with here are blocking the love from flowing in your body. So there was an interesting question at the beginning of this channeling because it's something that's commonly said, you get to choose your death. And I've even had some interviews with people that have communicated with the dead and many of them say that you choose your death, Julie Ryan. And so... It was an interesting discussion that you can, if you're awakened, there's an implication in the sentence that people that are awakened to the incarnational process, meaning some people that are thrown into incarnation, don't plan it out. But perhaps if you're a level of consciousness where you choose to reincarnate, then you can give yourself some key points in time where you could have processing catalyst of disease help you out. And in that way, maybe you're not choosing one particular death, but several, as I had learned in an interview, sometimes you have three that you choose. But at the same time, it's the circumstances around that that are, for some reason, a part of your spiritual journey that you've chosen and the incarnation. But the, the great thing about what Quo is saying is that it's not set in stone. Your destiny for death is not set in stone. There's multiple variables involved. And I do think that we can even overcome that programming. As we have learned in some of my interviews as well, people have had experiences where they go and unwind the programming. If you had pre-incarnational programming for your current life, something's happened along the way and you'd like to change it, you can do that. You can go back and change these programs. But the bottom line is, there's a deep desire with the pure part of your soul that exists between incarnations that wants to expedite and speed up and push you forward into a different spiritual realm. The only ways that we can do that is to understand these lessons. And sometimes what happens, the illusion itself, their density kind of traps you and, and lulls you into a sense of complacency where you don't really need to deal with these catalysts that are in, involved in your life. And so then when you have angers come up, you're not ready to deal with them. Another interesting thing they said is that there's memory of what has happened in the past in your body 
that can affect you as well as genetics but two people with the same genetics can respond differently to the cancer because you're still processing the catalyst so those are important and interesting things to understand about that process i believe that we can all heal cancer when we understand it the cure for cancer has been around for centuries we've all known the cure for cancer every time i've met someone that has encountered cancer i could tell that there was some sort of held emotion it happened in my mother's case when she died of cancer she died of colon cancer and there was a lot of worry anxiety frustration and anger that she did not resolve that she did not resolve and a lot of people are in that place so if you can actively right now deal with these emotions that you have not ignore them then you may eliminate the ideas of cancer in the future for there is a future that i see very clearly where we are all healed where we are all wealthy where we are all loved when the love flows within us and all around us the whole world can change and everything can be new in a single day the miracles that we can experience just would be amazing if we could all just take a moment and accept the oneness of all but we don't we're in this illusion and we're stuck in this law of confusion we might say where we don't really know what's going on we're not aware that we have to encounter it so because you're hearing my voice and i'm telling you this you now know it's not something that you don't know you know that you may have unresolved catalyst emotions situations from your past other lives whatever it is that you need to process and now's the time to do it now's the time to bring your soul back together those shards of your soul that you've left in the remnants of the past bring those back to yourself and become whole and you can move from this grand illusion to the next it's always fun to read quote but i could really feel it this time they were with me when i was reading it another thing that comes to mind is at the end they give you this technique uh and they mention just sitting and relaxing and then noticing that there's an entity to your left and an entity to your right does that seem to imply that there are entities always to your left and right that's an interesting technique that they're saying and that may be your spirit guides anybody that can give clarification on that particular technique or if it's related to any other um, references by ra the only thing i can think of is the spirit guides and they say there are three and the final questions that carla was asking were important important to those that are listening right now when we come together and we listen to these quote channelings we are a central force of light and power and it doesn't matter where we are you could be listening to me in venezuela in china you could be listening to me in russia in australia in the netherlands and we are all one in the same place and if we focus our energies together no matter where we're at in this world it doesn't matter where we're at because it's metaphysical we can send light and love anywhere and the more that we come together as a single unit even though we live thousands of miles away from each other we can make a difference in the world with the sheer power of our minds unfiltered purified by releasing these shadows and negative emotions we become powerhouses lighthouses for people to see and find their way you're a lighthouse you're lighting the way for so many people you have no idea the difference you're making in the world you can find all episodes of the reality revolution at therealityrevolution.com access these images to help you find true prosperity large sums of money true love radiant health and spiritual enlightenment with unique portals into the new earth
welcome to the Reality Revolution.